Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple of cards using more of the new Pretty Pink Posh March release. I did a video last week, and I'll have that linked in the end screen at the end of this video. I did a video last week making a couple of cards using a couple of the die sets from the release. And then today, I'm part of an Instagram hop to share more inspiration. And I'll have a link to my Instagram in the description box below the video so you guys can hop on over there and check it out. Plus there's like, since it's a hop, links to other uh, makers that are participating and giving inspo, giveaways, all the things. So that'll be linked below. And I had so many ideas. <laughs> this was another just really good release. I love Pretty Pink Posh. And I settled on the Daisies stamp set. It's so cute. It's so cute. So I used the Daisy stamp set. I did very simple watercolor with Distress Oxide inks. Um, I've used all kinds of things for watercolor, really. But Distress Oxides are one of my favorites, and I've done a bajillion videos on my channel <laughs> using them. So I used those along with um, a couple of the new die sets, sentiment set, etc. And yeah, did some ink smushing, all, all manners of splatter. Are we surprised? So, as always, links not only to my Instagram, but I will have a link to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies I use in the description box below the video. Those are affiliate links. All that means is if you click on one of my links and place an order, I get a small commission from that at no cost to whoever uses them. And that just adds up, helps pay the bills, helps keep my garage heated because... It always kicks on when I'm doing an intro, <laughs> but hey, it keeps me warm and keeps me from freezing. So great. And yeah, just keep watching and I'll show you guys how I made these cards. So yeah, this is the Pretty Pink Posh Daisies stamp set and I have Distress watercolor paper and I'm going to use the, the cluster image and a couple of the smaller leaf images because you've got a couple individual daisies there's a couple stems there's even a cute little bow which i almost used the bow but then i was like i'm gonna use i'm most likely gonna use baker's twine which as always one out so i've got my stamps lined up i have in my misty and then i used my anti-static powder tool on the distress watercolor paper and that's just going to help keep the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image and i inked up and stamped the um, images a couple times with clear embossing ink just to make sure i got all the detail and then discovered i wasn't able to flip like the cardstock around and stamp it again because they were overlapping so i just grabbed another piece and a powder tool inked up the stamps stamped them a couple times to make sure I got all of the the detail stamped then I'm going to coat everything with um, detail white embossing powder so as always when I do something this when it's heat embossing white on white I'm very boring on camera <laughs> like there, there's nothing happening there's nothing to really look at you can you can see it sometimes depending on you know the way how I'm holding it you know the the way the light hits it you can actually kind of see it and then it disappears when I melt it kind of fun so I like to heat emboss one because I wanted the white outline but also I've talked about this a million times I like heat embossing as often as possible when I'm doing like watercolor because the raised edges they're like bumper pads and they just keep things contained and that just means that I don't have to be so patient because yeah patience is my strong suit it depends on things you know I, I, I enjoy doing what I do I enjoy fiddling with with die cuts and I enjoy making cards all the things but with when I'm coloring while I'm enjoying the process I don't like having to like really pay super close attention and like oh you need to let this part dry and then you need to move here and do this it's like I just like doing it you know so the the raised edges let me do that I don't have to worry about oh this might bleed into the next and this might you know make a mess etc it's like just add color it's good so Distress oxide inks. I smushed it onto my little palette. I could have smushed it onto my work surface, but my work surface is is not white. It's it's like an aqua color, and also having a little palette generally keeps me from like getting my elbow in it, you know. So I just smush. I just smushed edges of the ink pads because I'm not using a whole lot of ink, and then I'm using my little mini uh, Ranger watercolor brush. You could just use a paintbrush. 
that works great. Paintbrush does give you much more control, but I, for me, it's just become habit. It's like ingrained after so many years. It's like when I'm using distress products, I am using my Tim Holtz watercolor brush <laughs> and it works. I do have a little cloth off to the side that I wipe the brush off between colors and I also wipe it off if, the, you know, those times where it just decides to be a little, a little too much water because that is the thing with water brushes. They're just, they, they can be finicky. And I am also working very hard for me. This is very hard to do a lighter hand. If those of you that have watched my videos for a long time, you guys know, I am very heavy handed with inks and all the things. And, you know, I'll add like five layers to super saturate and just make it as bold as possible, which is great. But to keep things like a little lighter and to like soften them and, you know, keeping white space, not my forte. <laughs> But I wanted to do it for this. I was like, I just, let's see if I can, you know, keep it a little softer. Why not? So I used, and, and also I'm just like rambling. Um, my colors were inspired by the embellishments I'm going to use that are part of the release. There's these little spring butterflies. They're little clay butterflies in little pastel colors. So that inspired the colors too. So I used cracked pistachio for my greenery. For the florals, I used kitsch flamingo. Um, broken china and wilted violet and then for the centers I use squeeze lemonade so just picked up the color applied it with a water brush and then you could be done here this is this is great but I'm gonna add splatter because one I had this all this ink just sitting there just just beckoning and also it just adds that little extra something it's gonna add some texture and some fun little detail and, and again do I need to explain myself <laughs> uh I like I like splatter it's fun and yeah, so for this, I use just a little tiny paintbrush because I definitely, I'm, I'm kind of getting into a little smaller areas. I'm not worried about like colors overlapping or anything like that, but I don't want big blobs because these are, these are smaller images and, you know, I, I still want to actually see the coloring I did. So I just added little drops of water to each section of those inks and then just swirled this little brush into them and then again wiping it off between colors and then somewhat controlled where the splatter was going you know kind of kind of aimed it to the same areas where I painted but again it, it is what it is it's going to layer in other spots and I'm fine with that so it's just going to give it that little extra something. So I went around and just did each of the different um, colors, just swirling them with my brush and that little, that little bit of water, and then just tapping the brush onto, um, or as close to those little areas as possible. And then um, after I get all that done, I'll of course wipe off my desk because I got splatter absolutely everywhere doing this and I was okay with it and wipe off my little palette all the things and then I let this dry which does not take very long because shockingly you know when you don't do huge blobs of splatter like I normally do it dries quickly like who'd have thunk so let that dry and then I use the coordinating wafer dies to die cut these and just tape them into place with little bits of washi tape so they don't shift when I run it through my die cut machine and I mentioned this before my I I use I I will continue using washi tape until I use it all up. Washi tape does have a shelf life. It will dry out. It'll get like crackly and it won't work anymore because the adhesive on it dries out. So I have tons, I have tons of washi tape. I don't know why I can like kept buying it because I rarely use it, but anyway, use it for that. But for the backgrounds, I use my uh, Craft Perfect dye tape. This stuff is, I'm really liking it. Just to hold, I'm using the same distressed watercolor paper. And I use that to hold, to tape it to the die because I just use the A2 panels. And I die cut the pierced leafy vines plate with those panels. And I used this same wafer die in the previous cards I did last week. And on those, I did like a dark background, which was really fun. But with these, I die cut it with the Distress watercolor paper. And then you can see there, I smushed the squeeze lemonade and the cracked pistachio just onto my work surface. And like I would say, surface matters. If you want that speckly uh, ink smushed look, you know, that gives all the texture and the speckly bits and all of that, you need to use like a craft mat because surface matters. When you're working on glass like this, you saw when I sprayed it with water, the ink immediately just pools. It doesn't beat up. 
because it's a different surface. But for this, that's actually what I wanted because I, I wanted it a little softer. Um, I'd added more water because I didn't want these backgrounds to be intense. Like I was working, I was working towards, I was like, I, I can do this. I can have some white space, sort of, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> I can, I can do lighter. <laughs> so I still added splatter because, you know, it just gives it a little extra something. So the same thing. I smushed the inks onto my work surface, used my little brush and just added bits of splatter. Um, and I dried those backgrounds with my heat tool in between ink smushing because if you try to add splatter on top of wet backgrounds that it'll just blend in to the background and you'll lose that definition because wet on wet blends wet on dry layers so I did both the the squeeze lemonade and the cracked pistachio and I, I had so much fun I was like I really liked how those turned out so then I die cut some more distressed watercolor cardstock and this time I used one of the eyelet circle wafer dies and then I used the Wilted Violet and the Broken China. So I'm using all the same colors I used for, for watercoloring the daisies. And I just kind of mushed these backgrounds um, or die cut circles into that little pool of the Wilted Violet and Broken China ink. And then same thing, I, I dried them with my heat tool. And then I'm going to add some splatter to these as well. And after I added the same colors of splatter... I decided to add um, more of the blue splatter to the the card front backgrounds because just to bring in more of the blue. I was I was enjoying that. So I added the splatter to those two little to those two little circles and then set those aside and then brought those backgrounds back into here. And I'm just adding the blue. I'm not adding the purple because a lot of times like purple mixed with like the yellow and purple mixed with the green can turn into mud. So I took also a little bit of that blue that was pooled up and I'm going to have to add a little bit more and smush that onto the backgrounds as well, just, just to give it that little, that little extra something. So added that here and there to these backgrounds. And then again, just set them aside to um, completely dry. And then I've shown this trick a few times in videos, but when you're doing things like ink smushing, anything like heavy water techniques, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the cardstock or watercolor paper can get really warped. And if you have patience or time, <laughs> you can just stick them under something heavy, you know, leave them overnight. They'll flatten out. They'll be great. Paper doesn't have a memory. I don't have time or patience, obviously. So I just use my mink machine, run them through, flattens it out. Good to go. O other times I will also just skip this completely. And just when I adhere it, you know, to my card base, etc., it'll flatten it out. But it's nice when I take a couple extra minutes to do this, like run it through my mink. It's nice and flat. And then I don't have to like fight with it so much. Um, any sort of machine like this will work. A mink machine, the fuse machine, uh, the heat, uh, laminator, anything like that. Just anything with heat. The only thing you want to remember. Also, I have trouble here. <laughs> I wanted to run these circles to so just flatten them as well. And it, it took me a minute. It just, it wasn't taking it. And I was like, why? I was, I was having difficulties, but I, I win in the end. It's all good. Okay. The one thing you don't want to do if you've done any heat embossing. So if I'd like stamped the backgrounds and heat embossed them, do not run them through your mink because the heat from the machine with the rollers will remelt all that embossing powder and smear it and press it out. And you will have just an absolute mess. So you always want to avoid anything that can like melt. So just straight up cardstock and ink, totally fine. You know, and I would, you wait till everything's dry. I just stick it between some parchment paper there, run it through, flattens it out nice. And then I just can go on about my day and finish my little projects. So I did all of that. And then I just die cut some scraps of pink cardstock with the spring script wafer die. And I am stacking them together for dimension just using my craft tacky glue. And I have um, the glue press here. And if you haven't seen that, I did a review on this glue press last month. It was about a month ago, something. It's on my channel. So you can search it up if you haven't seen it. And yeah, stacked three layers together to give it that dimension. And then to complete my sentiment, I'm using just a little, there's a little happy spring sentiment in this um, sentiment strips Easter set. And I just used my little washi tape just to mask it off. I've shown in other videos, sometimes I'll cut my sentiments apart depending on what it is and what I'm going for. Something like this, it's 
it's very quick and simple to mask off the rest of it. So I, I will do that rather than cutting it apart. And because I only wanted the one word, just a little happy word. And I had it on an acrylic block and I inked it up with that broken china ink. And then I just stamped it on the bottom of one of the panels I had used in the beginning. And then I'm just going to trim that apart with my little guillotine paper trimmer. And then trim those just into little individual sentiment strips there. And then after I got that trimmed down, um, off camera, I had also die cut one of the circles from the eyelet circle dies, the largest one. I die cut that from vellum. So I'll be using that as well. And then while I was like working on sentiments, I was like, ooh, I, I better finish the insides of the cards too. So my card bases are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. And on the insides, I'm going to stamp that little daisy cluster with the Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide Ink. So got that stamped. And then I'm going to use another one of the sentiments from the Sentiment Strips Easter stamp set. Line that up. And then once I got that straight, like so, there we go. I'm going to ink that up with that Broken China Distress Oxide ink and then stamp that onto the inside of both of these cards. So got that stamped and ready to go. And then did that for both cards. And then I can get my Misty out of the way and start assembling my card fronts. So I'm going to adhere the, the little ink smushed eyelet circles. I'm going to adhere that to the vellum that I had die cut. And then I'm only applying adhesive behind the the. Um, watercolor piece because adhesive shows through vellum so I'm hiding it kind of behind that and then adhering it to the background and those are just magnets from Glassboard Studio. My work surface is magnetic so these are the magnets from Glassboard Studio so I use that just to hold everything down to let the glue dry. It's like having an extra pair of hands. Another thing I've shown in a lot of videos is like sticking things like under my misty oh, like a stack of books you know same thing just a little bit of weight a little bit of pressure holds things down. So did that. And then to adhere my little flower cr cluster, I used just some thin foam squares. And then I pulled out some um, baker's twine from my stash. I happen I have some purple, purple and white baker's twine from my stash. So I pulled that out and I'm going to wrap this around the card. And this is why I didn't apply any foam squares underneath the stems. So I can just kind of shift that baker's twine just kind of underneath the bottom of the stems there. And wrap that around my card fronts, tie that in a knot, reverse tweezers for the win to hold the, the knot in place while I sit and zhuzh a little bit with the, um, with the bow until I got it the way I wanted it. And then once I'm happy with it, pull it tight, remove the tweezers, pull it tight again, trim off the ends, we're good to go. And then for the sentiment, because I'm adhering it on top of like the baker's twine and the little stems, etc. Again, I am not fiddling with tiny pieces of foam tape for this. Like, no way. <laughs> so I was like, mm, this is pretty pliable, even with the three layers, just because it's, you know, a fine scripty font. So I just put the adhesive on it, pressed it into place, stuck the magnets on top of that again, just to press it down and we're good to go. So I did that with my sentiments. I copied like the second card front in the same way. Then I used just thin little foam strips to adhere the little happy word and just stuck that right above. So it says happy spring, even though right here, we're getting there. People keep asking about the snow here. It is, we're getting above temperatures. It's, it's starting to melt. Still tons of snow everywhere, but spring is coming. I'm loving making the spring projects. It just makes me happy. Anyway, and here are the dots to the eyes. I saved them, stuck them in my little triangle tray. I only did two layers for those. Because I didn't feel the need to stack up three. And also because I lost one. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm not. I'm not die cutting more. Like two is good. It's good. If anyone wants to complain that there's it's missing one layer on that little tiny dot. Yeah, no. Anyway, adhered all that into place. And then adhered the card fronts to the card bases. And then the, the inspiration, the color inspiration, my little spring butterflies mix I you know kind of dug through because with little clay embellishments like this they're they're different thicknesses and I just I picked out my favorites <laughs> and figured out where I wanted to place these on um on the cards and then just adhered them into place with just little dabs of the craft tacky glue and that finished off these cards so like I mentioned in the intro I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video so if you expand that 
there'll be a link to my Instagram, a link to my blog post, um, the supply list with all the links to everything. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And as always, thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. It legit helps. It just, it tells the algorithms, aka the robot overlords, that you guys enjoy what you're seeing. And it sometimes sort of helps the more you engage with the content you love. It, it helps push more of that content out, if that makes sense. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Bye.